Ready? Rolling. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Hey, what's up, survivors? Welcome to another mind-blowing episode from Zombie Go Boom. I'm Chuck Murray. I'm Charles Fultz. And today we have a very special episode for you. That's right, it's the Ninja Turtles episode, except we've already tested a bunch of katanas, even ninjatos. We've tested nunchucks. But what we haven't tested, really, very much, is a bow staff, size, and the hockey stick. And that's exactly what we're gonna be doing today. I hope you guys enjoy it. We got a ballistic gelatin. Sammy over here, actual ballistic gelatin with a cool Street Fighter headband. And we got Leonardo up here just chilling. We might leave him there, we might not. Either way, <laughs> what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be hitting the Sammy one time with each weapon at 50% strength because we want to test out the weapon, not our own strength. And then whichever weapon wins out of that gets to finish the head. Are you ready, Charles? I'm always ready. Are you excited, Charles? I'm always excited. Let's do this. So this is the first for me. I don't know anything about the martial arts style of the hockey stick. <laughs> I don't think anybody does. As you can see, I used to play street hockey, which is why this old regent is so messed up. But it should be a lot of fun. We're gonna start with this. What's your plan of attack, Charles? Well, I don't know. I was gonna ask you, what do you think? We should uh, turn it around and, and hit him like a, a scythe, like a reaper scythe, or, oh, no. or turn it like this. I would do or that. Hit, or hit like that. Yeah, downward strike like that. That's exactly like, what I was thinking. Like this? Nah. Like this. <laughs> like this, like that. Like that, okay. <laughs> like this, like this, like... <laughs> like this. We, we turn it around and we <laughs> use this end of it. <laughs> All right, so seriously, Downward strike, like that, yeah. 50%? Yeah. Let's do it. So who do you think is gonna win? Donatello, Raphael, or Casey Jones? Let me know in the comment section below, and please like, so that we can keep doing these episodes. In three, two, one. Yeah. So, we did 50% with the hockey stick, loud, whack, and no damage. I guess we're moving on to the bow staff. Chuck Murray, what is your plan of attack? All right, so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use yin yang grip. This is overhand, yin yang. And then I'm just gonna go down strike, top of the head, kind of like the hockey stick, see what happens. All right, so we definitely have some superficial damage here, but no damage to the skull. Uh, size next. All right, Charles, what's your plan of attack? I'm gonna use the standard grip thumb right here, hit to the top of the head, 50% power. Let's do it. All right, in three, two, one. Well, so as you can see, that was a little bit lackluster. So we can't come up with a winner. So we're gonna do the same thing, but 
Round two. 100% power, baby. Fight! All right, as a measure of control in this experimental educational video, we're gonna do the same strike with each weapon, but 100% power. Well, let's do it. All right, 100% power in three, two, one, three. Damn! Charles was telling me not to eat this, but it... Okay, so, <laughs> piece of skin completely gone, and this is more important. It broke, which means it's made of some kind of inferior wood. So yeah, hockey sticks are not meant to uh, bludgeon people with, so don't bludgeon people with hockey sticks. Use a boaster, just kidding, don't yeah. do it at all. All right, so, it's the staff's turn. <laughs> All right, so same strike, 100% power. Ready? Mm -hmm. All right, so first things first, it's really hot today. I'm, I don't know why I'm wearing this. It's really hot today and the ballistic gel is melting. Uh, I made this ballistic gel not a super big expert on making ballistic gel. I'll try to get better. Uh, when Chris's heads arrive, I mean, that's some great ballistic gel. So it'll be, it'll be good. But even still, I wasn't able to get through the cranium at all. Again, spherical target. It doesn't matter if I hit even work. center. Even if I hit center, it's it slides. Bounce. It slides one way or another. It goes around the curvature of the skull. So this weapon, <laughs> can definitely hurt somebody. I'm sure it can kill somebody, but a zombie, when you're trying to destroy the brain, it's gonna be pretty difficult to do it with a bow staff. Along with that rounded skull, uh, if you have an actual zombie and this, all this rotting flesh is up here, that rotting flesh is gonna act like a cushion and it's pretty slippery. It's pretty slippery So when, and it's bouncy too. So whenever you hit it, it like he said, bounces and slips. <laughs> Crazy, huh? Crazy. So I guess it's uh, the size turn. 100%. 100%. We keep it 100, except for when we do 50%. <laughs> <laughs> All right, size, standard strike, 100%. Side of the head, top of the head, whatever part of the head it freaking hits. Let's do it. In three, two, one. Oh! Ooh, I heard that. You wanna take this one? All right, two things to note. One, still nothing to the top of the head. Nothing. 100% power, still nothing. Two, see this weapon? See how straight it is? Not. <laughs> see that bend in the middle of the bladed part? It's not really a blade, but whatever. Yeah, a lot of people think that these are meant for, you know, slashing. They're not, they're blunt. They're meant for bludgeoning and, yeah. and pressure points. Pressure points, piercing. Because you could, I guess hypothetically, you could pierce. Oh yeah, you could pierce soft belly flesh with that. Yeah, but see, these weapons were created in order to hurt people and, and mortally wound people. None of these weapons are particularly made to bludgeon the head. You could argue that the bow staff is, but there are a lot of other places that you could strike with a bow staff that would be a lot more effective. And really, none of these weapons were made to kill a zombie. Zombies are a lot harder to kill because they don't feel pain. If you tap someone on the head like that, they're gonna go down to the ground and probably start crying. <laughs> but a zombie is gonna look at you and keep trying to bite you. Yeah. So, what do you wanna do? I don't, I, we're, gonna, we're gonna discuss and on the next cut we'll have a plan for you. Like for plan. All right, make sure you watch till the end of this video because this head, as you can see, definitely goes boom. Okay, so for this next thing, we're gonna illustrate the point of what makes a good zombie killing weapon. 
okay? Do you want to swing away and have to hit a zombie four or five times before it starts to go down? Or do you want to swing once at 25% or once at 50% or just freaking decapitate the zombie pretty easily in order to be able to move on from one zombie to the next, to the next? Like Lynn Thompson says, bing, 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 kill zombies like that. So. I'm gonna do 25% with the Warhammer to illustrate how soft this head will look with the appropriate weapon. 50% with this to illustrate how soft the head will look with the appropriate weapon. And then... We're just gonna decapitate it and you know how much that'll take. I mean, it, won't, it doesn't take much. <laughs> That's the thing, pick, pick the right weapon. Unless you just... Don't want to survive the apocalypse, I guess. I mean, you know, you could choose that, I guess. I don't know. You could look cool dying. Or you could look cool living. You could look way cooler being alive. That's true. Because you get multiple chances to look cool. Yeah. Whatever. Let's Cars. Just, let's go. Ready? Rolling. Oh my god! Oh my God, I barely tapped it. I'm not even joking. I barely tapped it. I did that. I did. Oh my God. This weapon is ultimately it's, it, one of my favorites for sure. Uh, oh my God. Oh my God. You see the difference? You see the difference? I'm not tired. I'm not winded. I didn't feel any vibration whatsoever. I just did that and that was enough. That's enough, baby. Oh my wow. God. And we lost all the blood. So I guess for the next ones, we don't have any blood, but I am going to do the ax for my next strike. And I'm going to do the other side of the head so you can see what this will do. Oh my God. Well, I didn't expect it to fly away. But even though it flew away, so a lot of the energy from that strike was dissipated across its flight path, it still managed to do more than enough to kill this freaking zombie. I mean, did it go into the... Oh my God, yeah. Oh wow, okay. Yeah, it, wow. went, in, it went in pretty far. Look, look, show them the... The, the actual... It's la yeah. Crease, I mean, it's cut all the way into the yeah. cranial cavity. And then, and then we, we looked at the slow-mo here and this was just like a grazing blow. It like just kind of, what did you call it? Glance. It just sort of glanced, sort of scraped. Scraped, yeah. I think is what you said. Something like that. So this is what a scrape from a, from a war hammer will do. So I guess there's one thing left to do and that's to decapitate it. Oh my God. That's so, you see what, you see what I'm saying? You, you see what I'm saying? I mean, come on. It doesn't get, it doesn't get any more obvious than this. Don't try to be too cool in the zombie apocalypse. The simple tools usually work the best. All right, real quick, if you wanna see a playlist with either of these two awesome weapons, which we've used many times in the past, click right up there. Cool. In three, two, one. Oh my God. So Charles, how much resistance did you feel? Like none. <laughs> none? Yeah. Uh, I don't know how else to say this, so I'll just say it like this. The first step for utilizing a weapon properly during the zombie apocalypse is by picking 
the appropriate weapon during the zombie apocalypse. The Warhammer can be wielded by a seven-year-old and they're gonna do a lot better than a master wielding size. And I say that with a great degree of certainty. Would you agree? I mean, yeah, to an extent, for sure. The, the, the Warhammer is a lot scarier than the size are because the size, they don't have any sharp points on them. Uh, if you do get hit with them, it's gonna hurt, but it's not gonna hurt near as much as if you get hit with the Warhammer, flat side or with the crow's would, beak. Would you go as far as to say that it's not the size that matters? <laughs> yeah, I would say that. It's not the size that matter, <laughs> it's the weapon that you pick. And check this out, when I stabbed into it, I got into his eye socket. Through the, oh, through the temple, that's God. pretty awesome. That's insane. Like and subscribe if you learned something. I hope you did. That's the point of Zombie Go Boom. We are very close to 2 million subscribers, so please subscribe so we can do a 2 million subscriber episode. We're also going to do a 10 million... Uh, a 10, 10 million 10 year. Million. We've been around <laughs> for 20, 10 million years, baby. Woo. A 10 year episode that we really really want to do and we want to make sure that it is badass and whatever you do down there well <laughs> not that whether it's subscribing or liking that really helps us a heck of a lot it makes it so that we can make more videos like this one uh check out charles's jewelry link is in the description below and with another mind-blowing episode from zombie go boom i'm chuck murray charles fultz that's sammy right over there See you next time. Woo, almost cut your binger off. <laughs>